Hello everybody. Today is Saturday, March 23rd, 2024. And today is a heavy day for me. Yesterday was a very heavy day for me. Yesterday was a day that was enveloped, immersed in heavy council topics. And it has been for quite some time, but yesterday was an overpouring of just how many things are coming at the body of Christ right now pertaining to demonic strongholds. I'm not just talking about the areas inside the soul that need healing and the the strongholds of the belief patterns that are at the root, the principled beliefs, although I am speaking about that, and we will speak on that more. But I'm talking about literal demonic entities that are oppressing individuals that have been housed inside of them, on them, attached to them, however you want to look at that. Because you need to understand that your body is one of the smallest areas of your entire being. Our bodies are actually enveloped by our spirit. Our spirit is far bigger than our bodies. When the Lord says, a light on a hill that cannot be hidden, this is why. It's far larger than what you can imagine. You are a far more powerful being than what you can imagine. And I think that that's one of the saddest parts of sitting with the Lord pouring over this as I see the I see the impotency of the powerful being that they were created to be, which means the weakness, the infirmity of the powerful being that we were created to be that has lost its image. And it's lost its image for various reasons in this lifetime and in this realm, traumas, experiences in this life, abuses, rejections, neglect, essentially the evil spirit of this world and its influences over individuals creates a principled belief within a man about, well, for sure about this world. But the problem is that most people can only relate to this world and they essentially live as if this is all there is, what they experience here. And it's so, so far vastly more... Uh, that is available to us in the kingdom of God than just the experiences here. But the problem is, is that our church, the ones that are called to be set apart, are very much enveloped or immersed in this world. And we can't be. We're supposed to be in this world, but not of this world, not attached to it, not immersed in it, not locked in step with it, not functioning in relation to this world, relating to it. We will experience things here, just as Joseph experienced some things in his life where his brothers literally left him out to dry, left him out to die, left him estranged and intentions of doing so directly. This is the free will of man that plays out in this realm when we are not guided by the Holy Spirit when we're not in conjunction with the Holy Spirit. These things take place in our lives down here. We experience a great deal of pain and suffering in this world because of that. But because we sinned to begin with, this is what we put into play, and we will be also the ones called to set it right with our Lord. Isn't that the beauty of it? I think the beauty of it really is that we stepped away from him in our in breaking it the whole reason it's this realm is broken is because we stepped away from him and we hooked up with another one to counsel us and lead us in all our ways and we were seated with that nature but the beauty of god is is that even though we actually rejected him he never rejected us do you understand that he never rejected us. He actually decided to partner with us even more earnestly to get us back, to win us back, to save us. Imagine 
anyone who's ever betrayed you and rejected you. And you decide instead of being offended. (sighs) He is so amazing that you're going to work on behalf of dedicating your entire existence to saving that person in some way, loving them, even if they don't deserve it wanting to be with them as this is what i'm trying to say with with all of these messages that i tell you you really need to get to know your father and your creator because he has never once left you not in the fall of humanity did he leave us he always had a way for us to be with him still should we choose that repentant way we always did Before he ever walked out his mission to be Messiah and go through the cross and die for our sins and resurrect for our life in him, before he ever did that, he did that all before the foundations. (laughs) He slayed himself before the foundations, which means it was available to everyone. Reconciliation with God. And many times we see that in the Old Testament, how he showed up the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord. We have this situation where people have an intellectual knowledge base of our Lord, but not an actual personal experiential knowledge of our Lord. And what that really means, he tells me, is that you know what Scripture says, but your soul doesn't believe it. Meaning... Your mind can grasp the intellectual understanding of who he is and what he's done in scripture, but the, 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 the deliverance issue for salvation is this. Do you believe? And belief is that construct within the mind to begin with. You start a building block process there. Now, here's the problem. When you are a lukewarm individual, meaning when you are an unstable man because you have two different thought processes existing at the same time, this is a conundrum in a man. Meaning you know the intellectual knowledge that God is this and God is that and he is not this and he is not that. But your inner man is still in doubt. Is he real? Does he really love me? Is he going to take care of me? I'm not sure. I can trust him. That man is unstable in all, all his ways because you have two different constructs inside. Which one is really being upheld? In truth, which one is really being upheld, right? This is why this is why in the end the lukewarm get vomited out because you have to be committal. Non-commit, non, non-committal people or non-committed people people who will not actually consummate the marriage, which means consummate your belief system in who he really is, gets vomited out in the end because you're actually unbelieving in his goodness, in his nature, in his person, in his attributes, in the fact that he's not a man that he should lie, which really means he's not a man like anybody down here and he's not going to do you wrong. Lies is fraud, deceit. He's not that at all. And if you truly, truly believed that's him, you would never waver inside again. If you truly believed that he is, right? His name is I am. If anybody has a problem with, is his name Jesus? Is it Yeshua? Is it Yahshua? Is it Yahua? Is it, is it, is it Yah? Is it whatever, right? However spelling. Yahua. His name is I am. He said, Moses, you tell them I am sent you. Is he inside of you? Is he really erected in there and you're founded on the belief system of who he is? Because I tell you, your salvation is dependent upon that. Excuse me. Which leads me to this very grievous vexation of my soul and spirit very contrite yesterday i cried cried more than i have in a while from a depths inside of me that i cannot even express to you at the level of unbelief that is in the body of christ and i know he'll keep preaching on this until he is satisfied because it is vexing him He can show us just like the people in the wilderness over and over and over his goodness. And he can tell you these things in scripture. But if you never become a believer, it is if it is the fearful and the unbelieving that are in the number one and number two mentioned in Revelation that that does not make it. 
And here's why. You fundamentally have to be a believer in him. It's it's literally the number one thing. He couldn't do anything in his hometown where they didn't believe him to be who he said he was and demonstrated with demonstrations of. So when I see people in these strongholds that are really, really bad, I, I, I'm talking, I am seeing strongholds of psychotic, delusional extremes with drugs and alcohol, which are really drugs. Alcohol is really drug anyway. So drugs wrapped up with the sorceries and the pharmacia. It's really, really bad right now because he said they're running to a savior, but it's not me. They're called, as you are, Janet, to endure what they're called to endure in this lifetime. I endured the most of any man I was marred beyond what any man's visage has ever gone through. The things that I have my children go through in this earth are portions of that very suffering in various ways, just like what you've been through. Just like the abuse and the neglect, the betrayals, the rejections, all different formats, mental, emotional, physical, sexual, social. It just, they're required to come to me if I'm their savior. To endure to the end. But Janet, they're wanting a savior of a different kind. They're wanting immediate relief and to not go through the process with me. And I understand why they're doing it. I'm not heartless in that. Part of it is because we don't have enough deliverance ministers working, doing their duties and their jobs in the earth or counsel even, to give them the truth. Because all it takes, dear, is what you've been doing. Tell them the truth of what they need to do with their self-deliverance with me. Meaning, yourself needs deliverance. No one else is there to do it. The Holy Spirit is the one who does it anyway. And you have him at all times because he never left you. That's the whole point, Janet. I never left them, not even in the garden. I knew where Adam was. Adam, Adam, where are you? right? I knew where he was. I wanted him to know I was still there. I'm still here now. And what you're experiencing is just a portion of what I go through every day. Folks, I'm watching him grieve and I'm tasting that grief. Because he said, you see, they're needing salvation. And I want to be all they will ever need. I am all they will ever need. But instead, they're running to all these other outlets for their salvation. They're running to the created things and the created people for what I only myself can deliver to them. They're in idolatry, Janet. There's no mincing it. And you'll read the scriptures. They're in oppression because they're in idolatry, because they're not upholding who I really am and running to me and staying the course with me. I told you, endure to the end of it because they don't know me and a, their salvation is at stake. And I know you don't want to talk about this. Sorry. I just told them I really don't want to talk about this. Here's why, guys. Your salvation's at stake for real. I, I think that breaks me up the most. I mean, your eternal salvation, of course I mean that. But I'm talking about your salvation right now. I'm talking about all of it. Not, not because of the, the pharmacia or the sorcery or the drugs. <laughs> that is a symptom Someone asked me yesterday, do you think that he will send someone to hell for the use of the medication or the drugs? And I say both because some people are under prescriptions and some people are under like cannabis. That's technically you need a prescription if it's legal in your area. But I'm talking about that's 
It's a drug that's not necessarily dispensed from a pharmacy or alcohol. The story is going to be really difficult for me, I think. Your salvation is at stake, he tells me, because the whole of the of your saving, first of all, you have to think about what is salvation? What are you being saved from? You're being saved from estrangement when it really boils down to it, estrangement from God. That's what happened in the garden. <laughs> He never left you. And he's aware of what this world and the spirit thereof and the people that have coupled with it have done to you. He's so aware and he's very compassionate about that. If you knew how close he was to you when you're going through all of that. The salvation is an issue because salvation is reconciliation, which means repartnering. <clears throat> you can't repartner with someone that you fundamentally don't believe exists or that you can trust or that you know. He's there, though. The minute that you say you want his salvation and you believe in him, he is right there. But folks, that's the handshake. You have to walk it out. You have to have, <clears throat> you have, to have fruits, meat for repentance. You have to remain with fruits. You have to fruit produ produce. Fruits are a result of that union. And when I watch people be in demonic oppression under a principled belief system, and under that demonic oppression, there's a problem with the relationship with them and Christ, whatever reason it is. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And when I see a person that is not in freedom, I say, where is the Spirit of the Lord in this person's life? And he says, I'm here. I never left them, but they have to uphold me, Janet. They have to uphold the truth. And they cannot couple with the lies. The lies talk to them and tell them things like, you're not going to make it through this without this drug or this other mode or mod modality of function like drugs and alcohol. Sex, pornography, filling the void with these things fornications and idolatry, Janet. Idolatry is running to a created thing or a created being or both. It's usually tied to both because there's something behind it. There's a power source in the in the evil, dirty hell kingdom realm that they can choose to couple with. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And you'll see the fruits of that in someone's life. You'll, you'll know that the Spirit of the Lord is there because if you have the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord will witness the Spirit of the Lord. When the Spirit of the Lord is not there and it is another, I told you, these will know my voice and another they will not follow. That's what you're witnessing, Janet. <clears throat> you're witnessing speaking to people who claim me with their lips, but within them they have coupled with another and I know that's very sad. Do you understand how sad that is for me, child? I'm fully available. And so we get into the situation where these need healing inside their souls to get the deliverance. And he's asking me right now to talk about that. Folks, listen, if you find yourself in a situation where you're on drugs and alcohol or you're into, say, filling this void with just ridiculous amounts of sex or something else, whatever you're running to, gambling, those highs, those fixes, their fixes, their flesh fixes. You're feeding the flesh carnal nature when you partake in those things. First of all, that has to be cast down. You have to understand that you need to be repentant of that. And that's a problem that I'm seeing in the people is that they don't want to be repentant of it. They, they understand and one in one aspect that they want to be free of this demonic oppression and the need, they call it a need to use. 
but they don't, they're not willing to actually uncouple with it to get the freedom. And when you call a drug or alcohol a need, that has become your idol. I mean, it is what you call necessary at that point. And anything that is beyond Christ in your life and the power of God to set you free is become an idol when you call it necessary. So I have been dealing, and I'm, I'm talking multiple situations, many, several. And I have been through the years where I'm watching people I'm watching demons speak directly to me through people and they're clueless that it's happening, the people. The more I have to go through this, the more well-versed in it I get. The more you know the authentic spirit of God, the more you spot the imposters wherever they are in all their different formats. And their people are not in their right mind, clearly because they're in a demonic mind. You know, put this mind on you, which was also in Christ Jesus, isn't just a saying. It's literally put this spirit over you, inside, in dominion, that was also over Christ, in dominion in him. Lift that spirit up, the minding of that being inside of your high places. And yet what I'm watching is another that has risen to the high places within that speaks to me through these people. I have heard I have heard the slur and the whisper of the demonic speak directly to me. I've heard them curse me directly. I have heard them take scripture just like the devil does and twist it and use it to his own means to make it mean something that it doesn't mean. Become all things to all men does not mean that you go and cuss like a sailor when they're cussing like a sailor. You drink alcohol because that's what they're doing. That is not what that scripture means. That's an example, folks, of how the enemy will twist the purity of God. The word of God is pure, unadulterated, and yet they will find a way to darken it. Number one, you have to understand you are transgressing God when you are moving in these ways. And here's all the different ways that I'm aware of that you're transgressing God. Number one, you're in unbelief about his person and unbelief about your person. And you are in unbelief about the power of God to set you free. You are in unbelief that he's actually with you to set you free. And you are in fear because of these things that causes you also that you don't want to endure your suffering, that you will have to suffer in this world. You will suffer with him. He said, you'll share in my sufferings. And in this life, there is tribulation and you need to endure to the end to be saved. <clears throat> he literally says that that's scripture. Endure to the end and then be saved. It literally says that the be saved is at the end of it. Because once you endure to the end of whatever your process is with him, he's, you get deliverance. You get set free. But he said, what I'm watching is people refuse their salvation. He, he said, I think people think salvation is, I believe Jesus is Messiah. I believe he's God. I said yes to him. And then I'm going to go to heaven. That is, that is not salvation at all, folks. That is some factual knowledge about who he is, what he did, and that I think people think heaven is just some far off place only. Like it's this place some far, far away that I'm going to get to eventually. No, you need to enter heaven now. As soon as you say yes to him, you should have access to heaven now. Heaven is an elevated state within a man, spiritually speaking, that you tie into the real place. There's a real place, right? Your soul man has to tie into the God of heaven, exalting him in the truth inside of you and tap into the real place that you can get to without right in this temporal realm of time and space from elevating God and the truth all the way up into your high places. And then you walk in two different realms at the same time. 
That That's salvation, because in that, when you have raised Christ and the truth up, and you really believe in him, and you're really living as if, and you've got the truth exalted into the high places and not the lies, and you're not deb- denying the power thereof in you, you don't just have a man-faced image on the outside, you have now been reformed through repentance, which is a complete turnaround in thinking, which means before you thought you were in this world, you thought your body was all there was, you thought this is all there was, you thought, I don't know what's after this world. Uh, maybe nothing. You thought I might as well live it up and YOLO, only live once and do everything that I want down here. And I lived according to the ways that everybody lives down here. You have a complete turnaround from that. That's part of your first step of salvation. Now you don't think that. Now you realize there's somebody else out there who's more real than this, who created you. There's a place out there that is more real than this. This is a simulated realm that's broken at that and it's painful and it hurts. And we have to transcend this realm. It means you got to get through it and get above it. That's part of salvation. Your inner man truly believes he is. He said, first of all, you have to believe I am. Do you believe he is, right? Because those people can handle anything. That is why the Shadrachs, Meshachs, and Abednegoes, the Josephs, the, the Daniels, and the Lions dead. That's why those people could endure through all of that, because they truly had fundamentally bought the truth and sold it not. They were unwilling. They buried that truth deep inside of them. I'm seeing people have an intellectual understanding. We have been so blessed to be gifted with the gospel for so many years, having access to a Bible that people have actually uncoupled with it in reality, meaning the real reality. Truth in scripture, the word truth means reality, real reality. That's the other side. They have had it for so long, and we have been a people who has functioned for so long outside of the power of the proofs of God, meaning you walk straight with God, you're walking like a Moses, you're walking like a Joseph, you're walking like an Elijah. We have walked so long not like that in this life that we lost the ability to function in our giftings because of unbelief. We had the ability to set people free. But this is what he continues to tell me. We're not going to go around willy-nilly setting people free if they don't know what they're upholding within them at a rooted, structural, basic foundation level that's going to keep the door open for them to come back and come back with seven more wicked. So the attempt here of what I'm trying to tell you is your salvation is him. Your salvation is actually believing him to be who he is and upholding him in those places from a real depth of of belief within you. I I went through self... All the deliverance I've ever had never came through a human. It came through the uncreated creator. To the extent that all I did was write some things down. I'm going to repent of these things. I'm going to pray this prayer. I'm going to ask God to do this. And it was just whatever we had written down for for the genuineness of it. And as I went through that, thanking him for all of this, I was exalting him up into the high place and he kicked them out. And I heard them growl on the way out or next to my head, wherever they were. But it sounded like right by my ear, either in my in my head or right by my head. I heard them Argh! as they left. (laughs) That sealed the deal for me that a two things, this Bible stuff is real. God is real. And his power is real. His authority. We have to actually be upholding that in belief. Because that's where you're a believer. And that's where the power of God can manifest and do these things. So fundamentally, you have to understand you've got to repent. Because the the reason that he couldn't do things in his hometown is because they were unbelievers. If they'd have repented of that, he probably could have done some things. And he said, I did a few healings and things like that, but nothing of great, great measure. We have to be believers, people. When you become unbelieving and you will not endure what you've been asked to endure and you will run to another. You ever think that some of the things that we go through are tests? You should. Because is the enemy coming to steal from you? Yep, he's going to come and try to steal whatever he can. That's the enemy. And destroy whatever he can. It is the enemy, right? But you're being tested in all of that too. What are you going to do about it? That's your testing. Who are you going to run to? What are you going to do? And what I see is that people will endure for a short while. Their endurance like poofs out, runs out. Here's what I've learned in the past when I have quit. 
on the endurance, quit on the belief of God and ran to something else. It never helped me. The drugs or the medications from the hospital, the doctors, the whatever, never helped me. And it caused another issue that caused a need for another drug that caused another thing. that, And it was bondage after bondage after bondage. It never helped me. Not my inner man. Not my body either. Not in the long run. No way. That's what I learned by going into created sorceries for help with the demonic that's behind it. I don't know if people are aware of this, but pretty much every drug that they come out with, they go through a ritual of making it. And it has demonic entities tied to it. Essentially, the name of the drug is the name of a principled one over it. You have to repent. Repent for what? Repent for being in transgression against the Lord, sinning against the Lord, for not going to the Lord in whom you call the Lord of your life. If he's your master, are you doing something outside of his guidance? He said, no, I'm not going to talk about every little medication because they're going to be sitting there going, well, what about ibuprofen? What about Benadryl? What about um, diabetic medication? I'm not going into all that, Janet. They're going to have to deal with that with me directly. But I am going to tell you, it's called pharmakia. It's called sorcery for a reason. Yes, please look that up because he had me take a screenshot. Excuse me. Revelation 9, 21, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornications, nor of their thefts. Revelation 18, 23, and the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in you, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in you, for your merchants were the great men of the earth, for by your sorceries were all nations deceived. And he wants me to read Revelation 9. This is about the, I'm not going to read all of it, but this is about the seals, and it begins with the fifth seal. And then we get all the way down to where it starts on the sixth seal, around 13. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay a third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000. And I heard the number of them, and thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and of brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three was the, a third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke. And by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths, for the power is in their mouth. The power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like serpents and had heads and with them to do hurt. And the rest of the men who were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils nor idols of gold silver brass stone wood neither neither can see nor hear nor walk that can neither see hear nor walk neither did they repent of their murders nor their sorceries nor of their fornication nor of their thefts and when you click on the sorceries down here first of all fornications when you click on fornications people think that just means sex it literally says idolatry so neither did they repent of their murders that's slaying in any way shape or form it says figurative or literal so you can slay someone's reputation in gossip and that's still that they didn't repent of their murders nor of their sorceries nor of their fornications or their idolatry when you click on sorceries it says medication pharmacy magic and witchcraft So the destruction of Babylon comes about because people in, in that place, in that mindset, in that walk, in that way would not relinquish their idolatry or their sorcery or pharmacia, black magic, medication. 
You take that to the Lord. I'm not here to tell you about every specific med. He says, I'm not, I'm not talking. I'll talk to them directly about it. Just, to, just as I have talked to you directly about it. The whole point here, Janet, is that they have to have a personal relationship with me. And did you do you note that the number one thing they either claim in their delusional states whilst on these drugs that they hear from me, and it's actually an antichrist spirit. It's an unclean spirit. They know how to, Janet, they know how at this point and what to do to fool the men. And they have full access to them through these drugs that they're using. These are open doors. Or they'll tell you they haven't been able to hear God for quite some time. And he said, you want to know why? I resist the proud. Pride separates you from God, folks. He's in direct opposition to pride. And pride's number one and number two principalities to them is unbelief and fear. Unbelief and fear, folks. Unbelief in who God's real identity is, that he's real, that he cares. Unbelief in the fact that you can, with Christ, who strengthens you, do anything and get through anything. Denying the power thereof in you that raised Christ from the dead. There are so many unbeliefs that take place that lead you to fear. So when your root of your person's soul does not believe in the identity of God properly, you don't have him really rooted in there where you're really a believer in him. You really don't know him in these ways. You have an intellectual knowledge, but it hasn't penetrated. The truth hasn't been able to penetrate your heart. You have to repent of unbelief. He says unbelief is, is incredibly pervasive in those that call themselves by my name, Christian. Believer, set apart one, whatever it is that they call themselves. Because there should, it should be fruited out in their life. Meaning there should be results of what is taking place inside. But the problem is, is we've got an unstable man in all his ways who has two different mindings, two different. He told us yesterday, folks, that you're building a structure inside of you with what you think. You're actually like putting bricks and building a building when you think what you think. We have these constructed concepts inside of man's thoughts, Janet, that are contradictory. Which, which one do you uphold? If you've got hot and cold, which one, it, which, which one are, you're lukewarm? You're lukewarm. What do I do with that? In the end, I have to spew that out because it's non-committal. This one would not choose what they truly believed and uphold it inside. This is why it's a salvation issue. You, you, you don't even have to get as far as eternal salvation. You have to tell them right now, Janet, that their current salvation is at risk. And it is a bigger issue than what anybody is willing to talk about right now. Because people are like, listen, he did it all. You don't have to do anything for Listen, I did it all, Janet. It's all my works. You could never get reconciled to me on anything that you did other than coming to me for real. But that's the problem is I need them to come to me for real. To believe in me for real. To not turn their back on me and to be loyal. That's where your salvation comes in because then that repentance clicked in and worked proper, a complete change around in your thinking. You now know I'm real. You now believe me for who I am. You now trust in the fullness of your salvation in Christ and my finished works on the cross. And that gets erected inside of you and the truth breeds out and takes root inside of you. You buy into it and you don't sell it. You buy the truth. You sell it not. The problem is that's not happening when everybody is upholding idols in their lives. What happened to everyone in the wilderness who upheld idols, Janet, when I came over and over with my goodness to prove to them who I am over and over and over again, but they had seared consciences toward me. Eventually, so and reap comes in child and I have to give them over to the forces that they want to be with. So we're talking about salvation in its entirety. Now, later, the whole gambit. Salvation rescues you from being separated from me. And if you are fundamentally not believing in me, you're still separated from me. If you don't believe I'm really there, if you don't believe I have the power to save you, if you're not putting your life on the line, if you haven't died and laid your life on the altar, if you don't believe that you're a spirit being that far extends beyond this temporal realm in your body here, if you are unwilling and these are they who, who, who love, their life, love their lives not all the way unto death, you got to die. You have to relax. 
part of the death process is relaxing right into it where you give up all these fears. You give up all these misconstrued conceptions, these principled beliefs inside of you. You relinquish it all to me and you really believe in me. And that's when chains break. That's when I have been exalted within and I'm able to save your souls unto the saving of your souls. Folks, what do you think that's about? You think that just someday after you exit this place, your soul's going to be saved? Oh, no, Janet. I'm talking about salvation now. I'm talking about walking in heaven with me now. I'm talking about living in your vessel now. I'm talking about saving you from the enemy now. And then the byproduct of you being with me for eternity is what results in the saving now. Folks, you got to repent of this unbelief and this fear because those are spirits that are not him. He fundamentally is the biggest believer there is in himself. <laughs> he knows who he is. And he is stellar and rock solid and he does not vary. There is no darkness nor shadow of turning in him, which means he's not a man that he should lie. There's no fraud in him. There's no deceit. There's no, there's no mask. There's no uncovering him to find that he isn't what he is. He is what he is at face value. He says who he is. He is who he is. You're going to have to take all these matters to him. And if you want freedom, you're going to have to go through what you don't want to go through. That's what he, yep. He said, I must keep saying that. They're trying to run from going through these things that are supposed to bring us together in these things and closer. And instead of going through it, instead of feeling what you're feeling, coming to me with that, laying it down and fighting against that and casting it down. Instead of dealing with the things that you're truly believing inside, instead of the things you claim you believe inside, instead of going through that and really ironing that out with me and dealing with it and casting it down, you exalt those things, you keep them alive in you, and then you become a fearful one because of your unbelief and you run to every other modality in the temporal realm to save you and thereby you're in idolatry. Folks, it's those who would not give that up. Neither did they repent of their murders. That would be the slaying of this or that. Or of their sorceries, which is that medication, pharmacy, black magic. It says magic in there. And witchcraft. Those are work. Witchcraft's a work of the flesh. So they're feeding the flesh something that comes from magic, that is called medication and pharmacy. That's what sorceries is. And their fornication, which has in big, bold idolatry. If we're going to be unrepentant, where's the salvation? How do you even qualify for salvation when it has to come through repentance? You're saved by his graciousness. That's what it's saved by grace means. You're saved by the graciousness of his person who will never turn his back on you and find a way to save you. Does everybody understand that's what his graciousness is? Somebody who laid his life down and shed his blood, that's his graciousness. He did all that, never left you, never forsaked you, never once. That's his graciousness. You're saved by his graciousness through what, Janet? Faith. That's the per that is the, the, the persuasion of what you believe. So from, fundamentally, you have to be a believer. To be saved by grace through faith. It's, it's to be saved by his graciousness through your belief in him. And folks, that the truth of salvation is that he has to actually be real to you. Inside your soul, which means your heart. Which means your mind, your will, and your emotions all have to be tied together in a belief system. And when that doesn't take place, you're still estranged. I don't care what you claim. You can claim the, 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 the fundamental, um, you know, finished work of the cross, but ever, never actually couple with it. The narrow way and few there be that find it. The narrow way is actual belief in him through a repentance of a complete turnaround in your thinking, trusting in him fully. And then it says you have to have fruits unto repentance that remain his seed has to remain in you. All of that has to produce something. There has to be a product coming forth in your life. And when I see the product is rotten fruit, you can thereby know you're in the wrong tree system. 
your whole fundamental interior computer software program running in you is based on lies and and false identities, his and yours, and you're functioning from a wrong tree, fruiting it out. He'd like to save your soul. And number one, the way that you do that is to go inside with him and face all these issues of unbelief and really sort out your life with him as to what you're believing. And you can know by how's your soul doing. <laughs> it's never going to be sleep issues. It's never going to be the, the you being scared and fearful of in and of itself. It's never going to be addiction. It's never going to even be the demonic. It's never going to be any of that. That's the true issue. The true issue gets down to the root of it, which is a belief problem. Fear is a result of unbelief. And fear and unbelief are the two principalities or the principles that run behind pride. Your focus is you. Your focus is what you're going through, what you're experiencing. You are all important. All you can see is yourself. All you can see is negativity and issues down here. And that has that, that, what you folk, that's what you love. Now you're an idolatry just with yourself because you're exalted into the high places. What you think on, what you dwell on all day, what you focus on is your God. Each and every one of us is going to have to take that to him. Each and every one of us is going to have to face him on the truth of it. Because listen, at the end of the day, at the end of the age, at the end of all that is this world and the temporal realm is, is rolled up like a scroll, right? When heaven and earth pass away and you stand before him and you review your whole entire life, you'll never ever be able to walk in a lie and deny any of it. Your whole life will play out before you. Everything you thought, everything you said, everything you believed with the feelings and emotions of, and you'll be able to actually experience it in a multidimensional way. You'll have all the emotions. You'll have everybody's thoughts being displayed, not just your own, and no one will be able to deny anything. And he'll prove that he was there the whole time. That's the kicker. The thing that seals the deal is that every single one of us, it says you and the Holy Spirit will witness the truth at the judgment. You and the Holy Spirit will witness the truth. And you'll see him being there and being available the whole time. Everyone that will ever be cast away will know that that was the choices that they made, that they did not come into reconciliation in this lifetime for real, no matter what they claimed. Lord, Lord, in that day, and I will say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of continued in sin, transgression, and estrangement, you worker of iniquity. You have to reconcile with the truth, folks. You know what that means? It means you have to receive the truth into you and let the truth wash you and clean you and cleanse you and make you free. You are sanctified by the word. You are, that's cleansed and reformed completely inside by the word. Your salvation is where the spirit of the Lord is. The spirit of the Lord walks in the way, the truth, and the life. You want to be alive for real eternally? Begin that now. Go the way of the truth, the way, the truth, the life. To get the life, you go the way of the truth. Backtrack it. You want eternal life? Go the way, the truth. You have to couple with it for real. You have to become a believer for real. You have to you have to give up the idolatry of running to everything to try to save a physical life existence. You know, that's why people go into all that, right? I mean, there's never a reason that someone doesn't go to um, pain relief for any other reason. Because drugs are pain relief. Emotional pain relief, physical pain relief, mental pain relief. It's a it's an inability to run to God in your suffering. So you run to an idol, you run to a created thing down here because you're actually afraid of your physical body expiring or going through pain and suffering. And yet he suffered for us more than any other man has ever suffered to the point of his visage or his person, his image, his body and everything being marred beyond even recognition of being human. He did all that and stayed alive. That's the power of God to save. That's the power of life. Life is so strong that Yeshua literally had his organs hanging out, shredded, lungs, heart, whatever it was, body, blood just pouring out of him. Couldn't see, right? Any of that. You have to imagine a, a, a chunk of meat. That's all he was at this point. He couldn't die. That's how powerful life is. So I don't want to hear it from anybody who wants to couple with death. 
to try to save themselves down here. You're coupling with estrangement. You know, he wouldn't even, he wouldn't even take the drink to soothe him from pain, the vinegar drink or whatever it was like that they, that they wanted to offer him prior to going to the cross or, or on the cross. They did eventually give a sponge to his mouth and then it was over. But he refused to go through any kind of pain relief. He was in full faith of his father, knowing that he too could endure anything that his father put him through for the salvation of you. So he knows that whatever you're going through, the power of the Holy Spirit who resides in you, the power of life has the ability to get you through anything. But if you're going to run to try to save your flesh, people go to drugs to fix something. It's a fix, a drug fix, a flesh fix. Fear of death, fear of pain and suffering, fear of symptoms. Fear, fear, fear. That's not his spirit. And also, we do have to endure a lot of suffering in this lifetime. I'm not coming here to tell you any kind of medical advice, but I'm here to tell you that I'm watching demons take people down. I'm watching them be out of their right minds because they're not. They're in a demonic mindset. I'm watching them be trapped under oppression. I'm watching them be in states of psychosis. States of sleeplessness, states of unrest, because the spirit of peace is not indwelling them. When the God of Shalom, the Prince of Peace himself, godly order is inside your vessel, you can make it through. Anything. He's the perfect example of that. The son to be the exemplary one to all other sons. The first of many brethren to be born after him. The fruit of the Holy Spirit being present is freedom. The fruit of the truth being upheld inside a man is freedom in that vessel. We need to be a repentant people. We need to be some wise virgins at this point who know their bridegroom is, imp is, is intimate with their bridegroom because he's about to shut the door. And this is where I'm going to bring this all the way around and close it out at this point. Number one, please go to God, take everything you've got. You need to be healed inside. There are traumas and abuses and neglects and things. You have to take them to him one by one. And he's going to go through a process with you where he goes, yes, that's not me. I didn't do that. I didn't want that for you. They were oppressed of the devil. And I would like for you to get freedom in this area, which is, you know me now. I'm here. I'm not that you're safe with me. I promise you, no matter what we go through in this life, I'm here. And if you believe me, we can do something about these demons and we can do something about any and one of them that would ever come at you again. You didn't know me before. You didn't know the power of your agreement with coming into contact with one of them, even in another human vessel. You unclean spirit, get out of here now. Do you know how much that can work? If you knew that you could do that back then, but you didn't know that, but I'm here now. No one is going to touch you in that way now. Because an unclean spirit, I have control over, you have control over, you have authority over. You will judge angels. You judge them now. You have dominion over the unclean things. They bow to me and I'm in you. You won't have to go through that. If you believe and if you stand in your true identity, which means you need to know mine and who I am, then that I am good and that I am high above all principalities and powers and I'd like to crush them under your feet. But you have to be a believer. You have to believe that I'm with you and you are in me and I am in you and my dominion reigns. There's freedom in that, people. Go to him. Let him clear up all of these old wounds inside of you so that you can close the door on them so that the enemy doesn't have a foothold in you, in your memories, bringing these things up or scaring you with some future that you're going to go through because fear of the future, fear is nothing more than you sitting there thinking that you know how the future is going to go and in a negative mindset of it and you construct that inside yourself and so you build the building of that and it never even took place. Why would you choose that? There's no freedom in that. There's no life in that. 
Life is, wait a minute, I knew your ending from the get-go, from the beginning. I saw all of this, and I have nothing but, 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 but a hopeful future planned for you, and I finish everything I start. Do you believe? Go get that cleared up. Go let him mend your places inside and let him speak the truth to you about your good and hopeful future with him. Becoming a believer of the truth and letting it get rooted in you and heal you because that will shut the doors to the demonic. The strength that you will receive from that is incredible and you will too be able to endure and go through anything and you won't need to try to save your life anymore because you'll realize that in the death of you, you come to life. In the death of laying all that garbage down, listening to the enemy, trying to save some kind of a temporal life down here, which means a life uh, in a body in this broken time and space realm. You're so much more than that. Your spirit is so much bigger than your body and so much more powerful. It has the ability to couple with God to the self saving of your soul. Which spirit are you coupling with? Because you'll know by the fruit. Become a believer in Christ and find your salvation. That is how I can walk you through self-deliverance. I talked to him directly. He took me through these things. My mind would come back to these instances that frightened me, like, let's take a car accident for that. I was in a rollover car accident at 15, which jacked up a lot of my body in different ways. And so then I would get in the car with people and be terrified of their driving. But here's the difference now. Now I know that God is with me at all times and that he's high above all principalities and powers. And I can decree a thing with him and my life is different. I don't have to ride in fear anymore. I can de decree the power of the Lord over the over the vehicle and over the drivers and anybody that will come in contact with. By the grace of God, I thank you for this, Lord, now. And live a different life, folks, because you truly believe it. You can let go of those things. When you hold on to the one who is stronger than any created being, they all have to go. They all have to bow to him. Please lock into the truth, buy it and sell it not. Let it get rooted and grounded in you. Believe his identity for real and believe yours. Face whatever you have to face with him. And in that, gain your freedom. Because I had an experience last night, and I've had many experiences where I've had someone touch me while I'm sleeping and wake up and be like, oh, there's nobody there, like with these eyes, right? I've had experiences like that many times. But last night I woke up because someone sat on my bed, and I... And here, and I've even had that happen before, and usually I'll wake up and look and no one's there and just go back to sleep. This time last night, and I've been telling everybody he's shutting the door on the wise virgins to lock himself in with them soon, and he's going to shut out the unwise virgins. That doesn't mean you're never going to be saved and you're left behind. Left behind for what? You know, I mean, like, let's be real. Um, there's no such thing as a rapture, and I'm going to say it again, not in the way that people believe it. He can catch you up in the spirit for sure, uh, but that's a recommissioning. It's to glorify the bodies. It's to bring in what he's bringing in. You know, he still has an agenda with this earth. Where in the world are the people of God going to be going? Where are they going to be going? We have a job to do here, and we haven't even made it into ushering in the millennial reign. There is much to do. But he is going to shut the door on the first of the first fruits. He's going to shut the door on the unwise virgins and lock himself in with the virgins. And he's going to consummate that marriage, which it, it is a coronation pro pro process, which means he's going to, going to crown them. When we walk out in glory, we've been crowned. These are mine. These are de delegates. These are ambassadors of my realm and kingdom. These are one with me and they re represent Christ and the kingdom of in this earth. Soon the door is going to close to that because when I, I've been saying that for a while, but when I went to sleep last night, when that happened, when someone sat on my bed and I wasn't scared at all, this is what happened. For the first time, this is what happened. I flew up into a completed sitting position and the first thing that I screamed out from my spirit man was, I'm ready, Lord. Not with my mouth, not with my physical body. I flew up into a seated position. Wasn't it that they were asleep? The unwise and the wise were both asleep, but the wise had oil in their lamps when he came with his visitation. I flew up into a seated position, screaming out from my inner man, I'm ready, Lord. And then as my eyes were blinking, I didn't see anyone in the physical. 
I don't have those things happen very often. I ha I've been touched, like I said, I've woken up, I've had people sit on my bed before, I've felt all those things, but never, never have I ever jumped into a position completely righted and ready. It was like I was at the ready right then. And I was yelling out from the inside of me, I'm ready. Like all I was doing is taking a little nap, a little siesta. And when you came by, I, w I heard you, I'm ready. I'm warning everybody right now that that is soon to take place. And I don't know how soon soon is, but it's soon to take place. And the beauty in that process is going to be this. Once the door closes and he consummates this relationship with a coronation, which is a glorification, he's going to glorify these people, which means his light is going to shine very brightly in them unto, to, unto pulling in this harvest and doing the commissioned work that they have been commissioned to do in this earth with him, doing the father, doing his works through them. The unwise virgins will have an will have a, have have their first moment of realizing the truth seeing it because they're the whole reason they're unwise is they're unbelieving uncommitted working in idolatry and other things that have distracted them in this life all that they will have an opportunity to get straightened out because they will see the ones that are walking with the Lord, literally the Lord walking in them and manifesting himself, which means fruiting himself out of them, producing something that you can see that is different out of these. Person A is different than person B. And he said, in that many will repent and many will begin to face me in the truth of these things. And it's to the saving of their souls. They were all called, Janet. I called them all. They all had knowledge of me. They were all supposed to do this, but some only some did. That's coming coming soon because for me to be going through what I've been going through and putting out what he's been putting out through me to then talk about the massive amount of idolatry that's because that folks, what else other than idolatry and that distraction of it, right? The distraction of the world is what caused the unwise virgins to not have the intimacy oil. The oil is the intimacy of that straightforward, honest, pure, dedicated relationship behind the scenes to God, living a life really communing with him, really hearing from him in real true belief of him, in real true reconciliation with fruits, fruits and proofs of that relationship. If they're fruit, they fruit it out. The unwise in that time period don't believe it because there hasn't been a differentiation between the wise and the unwise yet. Everybody looks the same on the outside. God's going to change that. He has to because he just said the ones in idolatry, the ones without that oil, the ones that are unbelieving and not really walking this out properly with me in, the, in, in every way that they could and should be, they're going to need to see to believe. I didn't say I wouldn't save those who needed to see to believe, but I said, more blessed are they who did not need to see to believe, because in that you were willing to actually believe the truth without any proof of it, because you knew, you knew, you knew it was the truth. You knew, you knew, you knew he's real. You knew, you knew, you knew you could trust in him without ever having to see him walk into your house and in, in your presence and manifest himself in any way. But he never said he wouldn't save those. He never said that. And he's going to come and he's going to pull out all the stops and he's going to do that. And it's going to be a very dark period that we go through with that because darkness has covered the land and gross darkness, the hearts of men, gross darkness. That means great darkness has covered them. That's unbelief and idolatry. And so the unwise virgins will be locked out and it'll be to their saving that they see that there's true believers and truly anointed ones that walk with the Holy Spirit himself manifesting himself through them and with them. And it'll be to the saving of their souls. It's beautiful. Please don't ever look at the closing of the bridegroom locking himself in with his true bride. Don't ever look at that as dark or sad or negative. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And the, the, uh, and the only way to look at it is beautiful. And you're like, well, no, because some people are going to be locked out. It's beautiful because the locking in with the wise virgins, they're wise. They're wise in the truth, wise in the Lord. Those wise ones are going to be caught up, changed, glorified, 
crowned with life and manifest in this earth to help the rest of preparing a people of the Lord for the Lord. That's beautiful. And all those unwise virgins will have time to do that because what, what was the last thing that he said? What was the last thing in that that they said to the to the unwise virgins? You will have to go purchase your own oil. They can too go through and pay the cost for that intimacy. But it's a real cost. And it's a laid down life and you can't be in idolatry. You cannot be adulterous against him. You have to be a true believer and you have to give up all of the sorcery. All of the idolatry to be saved in this lifetime here in earth to then carry that out for eternity. Eternal salvation, like after this life, is just a result of did you walk in salvation in this life? Did you reconcile with him in this life? Because now the fi the finality has happened, the judgment happens, and we've determined that you were walking in his salvation and with him before, so now you will go into eternity with him as well. Folks, we enter that now. Best we deal with these things now. Because I jumped up fully awake from full sleep because I felt the bed depress. He sat and I knew it was him. You know, in the spirit realm, when you know him, you know when he's around. And I knew that whoever sat on my bed, that I knew that person very well. And I flew into a seated position saying, I'm ready, Lord, from my inner man screaming that out. I was like, Lord, I'm ready. And I'm looking around the room. I was fully expecting to see him sitting there. I mean, like manifest. I cannot, I cannot believe that that is not a preparatory warning. That soon, folks, soon, the wise virgins will be shut in with him. And will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And will walk out a consummated relationship visually. We're in a visual world. We're in a material world. Eventually, God materializes himself in this world. And he does that through his people. Sure, he can do that himself. He can pop into a room anytime he wants and manifest himself. That's that's not his dream. I mean, he, he does actually want to do that with people. Don't get me wrong. And he does. But that's not his biggest dream. His biggest dream is to be a corporate family. To be a body. A, a membership. A royal priesthood who is a peculiar people of holiness set apart from everything else out there and to be able to show this entire lost and dying world that, you know, when he says, I come to seek and save that which is lost, he's talking about all these situations. You are lost in there. You don't know me. I have the ability to set you free where the spirit of the Lord is. There's freedom. You're not free in these areas. You're chained up and you're imprisoned. And I come to seek that which has been lost. You have lost your identity. You have lost my identity. You have lost the power of God to work in your life. You have lost the coupling with life itself. And you have been found imprisoned with death. And I'm coming to save you and break you from that, folks. That's soon and nigh to come on the scene. And this is both a warning, it is both an educational homework assignment that you can do with him to get set free from these things, to get the salvation of the Lord, to get real salvation erected inside of you where the spirit of life has come and set you free from these bondages and strongholds and to get that intimacy with him. It's been a description of how to do that. It's been a detailing of the need to do that. And it's also been a warning that soon the door is shutting. And it's also been very, very descriptive of the beauty of what's about to play out. I, I, I really do look forward to that door closing and shutting. And I've had people reach out and go, I had a vision and I was standing there and I was ready to go through this door. And then the door was slowly closing like right in front of me and, and it was closed. And I said, you saw from the perspective of the unwise virgins, what's about to, to take place. And the beauty of that is this, if you need to see to believe he will come through with that too, because he'll find, he'll pursue you to the ends of your earth to find you and to recover you. And he'll do that through the ones who have this laid down life. They've given up everything. 
They've given up the, the entirety of their life here for the salvation of others, for the kingdom work and the Great Commission in this earth. And they will be those who have been pioneering and plowing the path. They've cut a, ru a rough shod path for you to follow now. It'll be easier once you see what they have walked out with their Lord. They have paid the cost to be forerunners, first fruits of his to duplicate out. They have paid that cost. And they are bringing that to the rest of the body of Christ so that he can begin this work of a great harvest of souls that are truly becoming saved. And I thank you, Lord, for this revelation and this truth. And I pray that people will partner with you today. I pray that we'll hear the gravity of the situations going on and the, the, the great need for the freedom of souls to take place and also the, the, the good news. That here is the gospel, the good news. Christ is here. The Holy Spirit is here. The power that raised Christ from the dead can raise you from these dead operations and break these chains inside of you. But you have to believe. You have to be saved by his graciousness that comes through the pathway of true belief in him, which is faith, which is a persuasion of what you believe religiously about God and the truth. Let it be erected inside your being. Let you be rooted and grounded in that and in that set free and saved now receiving salvation unto your souls, unto the saving of your souls, so that for all of eternity you are judged that you walked with him, united with him, became one with his spirit. Let the truth root in you and you were saved in the earth and so for eternity you will live forever more with him. Let that take place because soon Soon, we're going to have a better opportunity in the darkest of times to see God manifest through his manifested children. His Romans 8 kids are going to come soon, and they're going to show the world who the king is because he's going to manifest himself right through, right through them, folks. And in that, we'll see the difference between the wise and the unwise, and the wise will bring this all to play, folks. And I love you very much.